In this video, we'll be learning control flow in Svelte 5 to handle conditionally rendered elements, loop through lists, and to handle user interactions. I'll walk you through every line of code and concept step by step, so you'll not only understand how it works but also why it works. However, from now on we'll be using TypeScript in this course as it provides type safety. If you don't know TypeScript then don't be worried. It's almost same as JavaScript but with some enhancements. You'll be able to understand its code very easily. So, let's get started. First let's talk about conditional rendering with if blocks. In Svelte, conditional rendering is done using if blocks. These blocks let you show or hide parts of your template based on a condition. Let's break it down with a practical example. Imagine you're building a dashboard that shows a loading spinner while data is being fetched and hide it when data is fetched. Let's understand it by implementing it. First, set lang of script to ts as we'll using TypeScript. Next, I defined a variable is loading with TypeScript's boolean type and set it to true. This variable controls visibility of the loading spinner. When this variable is true, the spinner renders. To simulate an API call, I used setTimeout method. Inside it, create anonymous method. Inside this method, I've set is loading variable to false. After this method, I've set the timer to 4000 milliseconds, which are equivalent to 4 seconds. Now we create if block using curly braces, and inside it use hashtag before if, and then pass condition to it. Right now, check whether is loading variable is true. Inside this block, create paragraph to show loading message. Then create another if block, and in condition, check whether is loading variable is false. Inside it, create the content to display. Here, once is loading becomes false, Svelte will automatically remove the loading message from the DOM and renders the second if block, which displays the loaded content. This approach is efficient because Svelte doesn't just hide the element, it completely removes it from the DOM when the condition is false, saving memory and improving performance. Now run the app to test. Here, loading message is printed. After 4 seconds, data loaded message is printed. This way, we use if statements inside the template. In conditions of if blocks, we can also write variable name to check if condition is true, and for checking false condition, we put exclamation mark before variable name to turn it false. And if works just same as before. Majority of you might be aware it already. Now let's talk about else and else if statements. For more complex conditions, Svelte supports else and else if blocks. Let's say you're building a user dashboard where the UI changes based on the user's role. Let's understand it with code example. I start by defining user roles with a TypeScript union type and assign admin, editor, subscriber and guest roles to restrict possible values. This line creates a TypeScript union type called user role that restricts values to only the four specified string literals, enforcing type safety by preventing invalid role assignments and catching errors during development. Next I create user role of user roles type and assign a role in string format. I also define error message as a string or null to handle error states. Then I create if block to check the error message. Inside it, I printed the error message. Then inside if block, I created a block using curly braces. Inside it, write colon and then write else if and then enter condition. Inside it, I created a heading and some control button related to admin role. After that I wrote few more else if for editor and subscriber roles. And finally, I added the else block to handle any other guests. Now let's understand this code. First, if block checks if there's an error. If error message exists, it displays an error alert. If there's no error, it checks the user role. For admins, it shows a dashboard with admin controls. For editors and subscribers, it displays publishing tools. If the user does not have any of above roles, then else block renders a guest message. This chaining of conditions ensures only one UI block is visible at a time, making your template clean and predictable. Now run the app to understand it in detail. Here, error message is showing, because error message variable is not null. That's why it displayed the error message. Now let's assign null to error message. Let's check the result now. Now admins dashboard is showing here, because we have assigned admin role to user role variable. 
Now let's assign editor role to user role. This time, it's showing an error. If you know the reason behind this error, then comment down below. This error occurred due to type safety of the TypeScript, and it's great that we've able to identify this problem right at development time. Now let's understand that why it's showing error this time. Error describes that comparison of value is unconditional. It is unconditional because user role variable is of user roles type variable and we are comparing it with string data type. Types of both variables is different. There are many solutions to solve this error, but I'll explain only two because these two eradicate the root cause of this error. First solution is that we cast user role variable as string format in all blocks. Now comparison will be of two strings. So there will be no error. The second solution is that we cast this string value in condition as user roles. This will also solve the error as both values are of user roles type now. Now, we'll have to use it in every condition to avoid errors from that code block. If we check the results now, we can see the control related to roles. If we provide any role which does not exist in the user roles type, then it shows the content of the else block. Also TypeScript gives an error because the role we assign to user role does not exist in the user roles type. Now if we provide one of above listed roles, then error goes away. With this, if else blocks are complete. Now let's talk about each block. To render list dynamically, Svelte uses each block. Each block works same as each loop, but it renders HTML content inside it. Let's say you're building a product table for an e-commerce app. Here's how you'd structure it. First, I'll define a TypeScript interface for product to enforce consistent data structure. So each product has an ID, name, price, and in stock status. Then I'll create a reactive products array of product type. Inside it, I'll provide some sample data. In the template, I'll create a table. Then I'll create table header and inside it, I'll create columns headings. Then I'll create table body and inside it I'll use each block to loop through products. Here, I'm using product ID as key in each loop. It ensures Svelte can track items uniquely during list changes. Keys prevent bugs like UI state sticking to the wrong item and optimize performance by reusing DOM elements instead of recreating them. Without a key, Svelte tracks items by index, which breaks stateful elements when the list order changes. So, it's always a good practice to provide ID as a key. Then inside it, I created a table row. Then I printed the product name and product price. Then inside stock column, I'll use if else statement to print available if product is available and print out of stock if product is not available. This combination of loops and conditions keeps your templates concise and maintainable. Now run the app to see the results. Here, we can see the table with products and with their availability. This is how we use each block in Svelte to render the list of items. With this, each block is complete. Now let's talk about key attribute in loops. The key attribute is essential for optimizing list updates. Let's say you have a list of to-dos and a user deletes one. Without a key, Svelte might re-render the entire list, which is inefficient. With a key, Svelte identifies exactly which item changed and updates only that part of the DOM. In our product table example, we use product ID as the key. This tells Svelte to track each row by its unique ID. If the array order changes, Svelte reorders the DOM elements instead of recreating them. Keys also prevent bugs in stateful child components. For example, if a user is typing in an input field inside a list item, a missing key might cause the input to lose focus during updates. Always use a stable identifier for keys, not the array index, since indexes change when items are added or removed. Now let's talk about event handling. As we've covered conditional statements, loops, and keys, let's put it all together with a real-world example, a to-do list app. This will show you how to handle user events, update state reactively, and see how Svelte's control flow works in action. First, we create a to-do interface with ID and text properties. Then we initialize a reactive to-do's array. Inside it, 
we can pass 2 to deduce value as initial value. Then we create new to do text variable and initialize it with empty string. Then create add to do function and pass event in parameter. Inside the function, use event.prevent default method. It prevents the browser from reloading the page when the form is submitted, which is the default behavior for form submissions. This allows your Svelte app to handle the form data on client side without a full page refresh. Then use if statement and use new to do text.trim and negate it. Inside it, use return to prevent further execution of this function. It will prevent null value from being submitted. Then use to do array, pass array to it, and inside it, use spread operator to copy all existing values of the to do array. Next, we add new value in array by pass data that now as ID and new to do text as text. Next, we assign empty string to new to do text to empty input field. Then we create delete to do method and pass ID as parameter to it. Inside it, use to do arrays and initialize it to do dot filter method and inside it, pass this lambda expression to filter the to do array. It will check the whole to do arrays and keep only those values where to do.id is not equal to id. Now let's create UI design of our app. First we create form and use on submit attribute and pass add to do method to it. It will call this method on form submission. Next we create input field, set type to text. Use bind value attribute and pass new to do text variable. It creates a two-way binding between the input's value and the new to-do text variable, syncing changes automatically in both directions. Set placeholder. Also set aria label. It provides an accessible name for screen readers when there's no visible label. Then pass some Tailwind classes to beautify this field. Then create button and set label and pass some Tailwind classes. Set type to submit, with this form is complete. Now we need to create a list to display the to dos So, we create unordered list, pass this class to give it all available width. Inside it, we use each block to iterate over to dos list, and also pass to do.id as key. Inside it, create list item tag and pass some Tailwind classes. Inside it, Create span tag to display to do and also pass text left class to keep text on left side. Next, create delete button. Use on click attribute and pass anonymous method to it. Inside it, call delete to do method and pass to do.id. Now run the app to test it. Here, we can see the input form and default to dos which we provided to the to dos array. Let's add new to dos. To do are being added in the list successfully. Let's delete these. We're also able to delete these to dos. If we refresh the page, we can see the default values again. To remove these, we simply remove these from the to dos array while initializing. Now refresh the page. Default to dos are no longer available now. With this, our to do app is complete.